Hello everyone, it's Craig from Just Genealogy, and today is Book Sunday. This is our third Book Sunday, could be our second, but we're going to call it number two, even though it's probably number three. So today I want to talk about dictionaries. Yeah, everybody has a dictionary. We've been throwing out Webster dictionaries for years because we can get words out on Google pretty easy. And I'm not going to talk about Black's Law Dictionary, of which I have several. This is the third edition. I have the fourth. I have the fifth. I'm always hesitant to say which one of them is better than the other. I just happen to use the one that's at hand when I need it, and I have them in multiple locations to cover it for me. And I'm not going to cover medical dictionaries either, like Cooper's Dictionary or um, the Medical Lexicon or any of the various medical dictionaries that Heritage Book sells today. What I'm going to talk about is basically two dictionaries and a hidden dictionary. Now, the first dictionary I want to talk about is... Ada Zack. Ada Zack is by far the number one entry level dictionary. It costs $14.95. That makes it a throwaway. It is an excellent dictionary that covers a lot of things at a level of detail that is quite interesting. But in the true sense of the word, it is just a dictionary. So when we look at something in the dictionary, and I've just randomly opened up a page, and we see the word uh, Shandri, a place where candles were kept. Okay? Or Chaparral, a thicket made of brush. Or Clap Church, a parish clerk. Odds are that there are words in here that you're not going to find on Google. At least that's my experience. I... I'm not saying I don't go to Google first because it's easier. But when I don't find it in Google, I reach for a dictionary. And one of the dictionaries that I reach for is A to Zach. Now, the other dictionary that I reach for, which actually I like a little better, is what did they mean by that? By Paul Drake. What I like most about... Paul Drake's book is that he puts things in context. So let me, I didn't bother to, as I said, I looked, just pulled, opened up a page. Let's see if any of those words I just talked about show up. Won't it be embarrassing if they don't? Don't you notice how you have to do these things page by page? Chandler, the occupation of one who makes and sells candles, that gave rise to the surname Chandler, occasionally one who sells trinkets. So here we have a different def definition. So we could go back here, and I see that there is something here under chancery. Let's see what. Ada Zach has to say. So, let's make sure we're looking at the same thing. So, there's Chancery Court, an equity court in England, an ecclesiastical probate court. See also Chancery, an equity court presided over by a deputy governor and council. So that's what Ada Zach says. And then in, what did they mean by that? It says, courts of Chancery, except in a very few states, no longer distinguished from courts of law. A court having general equity powers as distinguished from those at law. In early times, courts of chancery universally were separate and distinct from law courts. So you can see, similar but different. Um, this is why I use both of them. And I believe that in time, if you're not just doing genealogy, but a genealogist, you're going to own both of them. And they're going to sit side by side. And eventually you will own a third because Drake found that after he published this book that there was more to be had. And what he wanted to do originally was 
and we talked about this. What he originally wanted to do was to take this book and make it thicker by adding a supplement, adding, creating a new book thicker in a, in a new edition. And this already was, um, had been around a while. And I felt that those people that already owned the book wouldn't like that very much if they bought a book that was, you know, a half an inch more. But so we created a book called More. What do they mean by that? And that one has gone out of print. Uh, but I'm working on bringing it back in print as we speak. And I don't understand why I haven't brought it back into print. I don't understand why I haven't brought it back into print. But I will hopefully get that done in the next month or so one way or the other. Um, what do they mean by that comes in paperback and in hardback? Um, I always prefer hardbacks, but that's just me. Uh, the price, of course, is different. And the paperback version is twenty dollars, uh, you know, five bucks more than the fourteen ninety five, and the hardback is thirty. Now, what I wanted to talk to you also about was another dictionary that's hidden. Don't you just love things that are hidden in books? I mean, that's part of my role in life is to find things that are hidden inside books, like good descriptions of things and that kind of stuff that don't really belong where they are maybe, but this one belongs exactly where it is. And what I'm referring to is Estate Inventories and How to Use Them by Kenneth L. Smith. This is by far one of my most favorite books around. I've been working in the warehouse all day. It's been a bad day. Um, so basically what it is most simply described is words that are found on estate inventories. So just opening to any page, what do you think a barkentine is? It's a sailing vessel with three or more masts, a four mast square rigged and others four and after rigged. Well, I wasn't thinking of a ship, but how about a bark spud? That's a tool for removing bark from logs to hasten drying. Or what's a, a deal? It's a pine or fir wood, loosely any plain unfinished wood. A unit of timber measurement, originally a board three inches thick, nine inches wide and 12 feet long. That's a standard deal. A whole deal is one and a one quarter inches thick. A slit deal is five eighths inches thick. A five cut stuff is a half inch or less thick. Deal ends are any pieces less than six feet long. Ladder of size varies with locality. And also it's a rare Dutch wine. And do you know what a dog lock is? It's a type of flint lock. How about a groping hoe? It's a heavy hoe similar to a mattock used for breaking ground. Um, a half joe is the same thing as Johannes. Johannes, rather, not Johannes. Johannes. A hake is a pot hook or attachment for a plow. So my point is that, you know, I didn't go and check to see whether Google had all these words or not. But my experience is, is that Google is not always your friend. Um, and when Google is not your friend, it's time to go find something else to help you out. And nothing's worse than reading something and not understanding what it means and being generally unsuccessful in finding out what it means rather quickly, efficiently, and effectively. Um, one of the problems we have is when we read things in documents that we don't understand, sometimes we read right over them and we miss the whole point. Um, some things found in people's inventories might identify what their occupation is, which we didn't know otherwise, except by the things that we find in their inventory. I have a whole bunch of tools for my grandfather, who's a photo engraver. There's no such thing as a photo engraver anymore, at least not in great numbers. It's a very skilled thing now, whereas in the old days, it used to be something that people did, especially if they worked at newspapers. Photo engravers, created pictures made out of dots with various shades of dots or whatever that means. I have blocking from it and I have tools from it. I don't know what I will ever do with those tools except probably give them to my grandchild. 
Um, I have no idea what she'll do with them either, but she'll figure it out. So anyway, this has been book day. This has been dictionaries. I'm sorry that we skipped the law dictionaries, and I'm scar sorry that we skipped the medical dictionaries, but you don't want me to run out of things to talk about, do you? So, um, is there a discount associated with these books today? Of course there is. That, that, it's been a rough day. Uh, that code for a 20% discount on any of these books is dictionary, D-I-C-T-I-O-N-A-R-Y in capital letters. So this has been Just Genealogy, where we are converting people doing genealogy into genealogists day by day. See you tomorrow. Bye.